that's good, isn't it? Hello, I'm Emmett Ryan from Ball in Europe here, and today we're here to talk about Luka Doncic, who is coming off by quite some distance, his most rested summer in a very, very, very long time. So we're going to talk about the impact of that rest, like how it came about, obviously, although that's pretty straightforward, why it matters, and then we're going to get into sort of, you know, how that rest kind of has to still be an ongoing thing. It can't just be, well, he got a summer off. And then we're going to look at the ceiling for the Mavs. Uh, before we get into all that, if you haven't already, please subscribe. The button is somewhere there. Uh, we're keeping driving forward. Uh, thanks to all the support so far, but we got to keep people coming to this channel to get more love, get more people joining in. So thanks very much. And now let's get to the first point. All that rest. So, by far, this has been Luca's quietest summer in a while. We've got to go all the way back to the summer of 2019, seriously, uh, since he last had this much rest. Because we can't count 2020 because, of course, the season ended much later due to the pandemic and the bubble, etc., etc. Uh, so then we get to 2021 when the Olympics happen. And, of course, he goes all the way to the medal round, so was playing... All the prep before that was playing every game in the Olympics and had obviously been the key man for Slovenia there. So comes through to that season with the Mavs. And they do pretty well in the playoffs. Don't go all the way, but do pretty well. Then we get to the summer 2022 and it's Eurobasket. And Luca's usage is through the absolute roof. It's sky high usage for Slovenia's national side both in the prep games and in Eurobasket as a whole. They exit in the quarterfinals with Luca looking absolutely exhausted. The season, even with the Kyrie trade, didn't work out. And it's like, oof, oof, oof. He is running himself hard. He is being run hard. And we go on to 2023, and it's more of the same. World Cup preparation games, the World Cup itself, where again they go to the quarterfinals. Again, that's where they're eliminated, this time by Canada. And, uh, by the way, we've got a Canada video. I'll point to that there. And, again, he's exhausted, but he gets through. And the narrative throughout the playoffs last year, I was talking about it, I was writing about it, is how tired and broken Luca looked and just how all that wear and tear was building up. And we were coming through to yet another summer of heavy Luca usage. And here's the thing before we get to how light this summer was. Next summer is going to be heavy as well. I fully expect Luca, even if the Mavs go all the way, we'll talk about ceilings in a minute, uh, but even say hypothetical for this, even if the Mavs go all the way and win the championship this year, so you're bringing them into late June playing playoff games, then in September and really in the prep before September, he's going to have Eurobasket again. Actually, it starts in late August. So again, we can expect him to be heavily featured for Slovenia in the next Eurobasket as well. I'd be very surprised if he doesn't suit up. So this summer, though, is different. This summer, he didn't have that kind of usage. There was the Olympic qualifying tournament, sure, but he played a total of three games. Three games. And there wasn't much of a lead into that either. So this and it ended, very importantly, on the 7th of July, the whole tournament. He was actually finished a day or two earlier because, of course, he went out in the semi-final round. But that early exit meant Lucas had, by far and away, his biggest rest coming into a season for the Mavs. Just off a season where he carried them on his back to the NBA Finals, was in the conversation for the MVP award. And now it's a case of, wow, this is going to be the healthiest and, most importantly, least fatigued Luca in a very long time for Dallas. So what will that mean? Well, it means they got to keep thinking about rest. So we've seen a pattern in recent years developing where you almost have a choice. You either win MVP or you get a shot at the championship. And while part of that is coincidental, there isn't entirely coincidental fact to it that whoever is winning MVP is going to have extraordinary usage. I mean, really, really, really high minutes, really high numbers. We saw it with Jokic, we've seen it with Embiid, we've seen it with Giannis. And we saw it with Luca, who was a contender last year, and we're going to keep seeing that. If you're going, like, you can be in the conversation for MVP and not... Uh, you know, be quite at that level in terms of usage. But you probably can't win it without some really, really wild usage at the current point. Just, that's because where the NBA is right now. And when you look at sort of what the Mavs need to do this season, because this is a brutal West, no doubt about it, 
I'm thinking anything top six is great. And you might go, they could be the best team in the West. They could win the West, just to be clear, again. I'm saying the regular season, top six up, that's the goal. Basically, avoid the play-in. Because if you avoid the play-in, that's, of course, at least one game fewer, possibly two games fewer, depending on where in the play-in you land. But more importantly, to be honest, you have gotten, with the way the West is, about as good as a draw as it's going to get. Because this is to stacked West that you don't want your guys to be killing themselves just to go out in the first round to a great opponent. And they will all be great opponents in the West playoffs this year. I think that's the one narrative. Clay's obviously coming in. That'll be quite a good guy to have. He's great with the ball and hand me wrong, but his off-ball work is going to come in really handy. You've got Kyrie, he's one of those generous men known to humanity on the court. It's, I've, I've waxed lyrical before about how, how you can see when you watch Kyrie Irving play why other players love playing with him because he's willing to take it on, but he's so happy to defer. He is just like ultimate teammate if you were a basketball player like he's who he's a guard you want to be working with in terms of just you know the love part on the floor like Luca for the superstar part is also the guard you want to be playing with but different roles and you look at Luke and Luke is obviously a guy who needs a lot of that ball but like Luke has run himself hard these past few years I'm hoping this rest of summer is vital to him uh, because you know we don't want to see Luka Doncic you know just burn himself out to win MVP. Great. Superb. He will eventually win an MVP, I feel. Although it is obviously very competitive and very tight. And that being said, what does Dallas care about? Him winning the MVP or them winning the championship? And I think you got to pick between one. And you got a shot at the championship with this roster, I think. You know, obviously this window, like, Clay isn't getting younger. Neither is Kyrie, although Kyrie is playing like he's ageless. So we could have a bit of a LeBron aging situation there with Kyrie. Who knows? Uh, but, uh, you know, there's still a few years yet, though, to judge that. But, yeah, it's I, I just look at this and I go, the focus should be on having your core players, all your best guys, in the best possible health come April, come May, when the games really, really matter. Like, they're going to have to win a lot of games to get a top six finish. Don't get me wrong. But be smart with the, the overusage of Luca. Like, don't lean too hard on him. And that'll also obviously help the rotations in the playoffs. So now we get into how far can the Mavs go. Yeah, they can win it, but it's that simple. Um, because obviously the Mavs won the West last year. We're beaten in a gentleman sweep by the Celtics, 4-1 to in the finals. This will be a case where I think the Mavs, obviously, they look to have improved overall on the, on the floor. Like, the addition of Clay is going to be great. But how you use him is going to be mattering, mattering as well. And I look at this and go, yes, they can, they're definitely good enough to win the NBA championship. Getting out of the West and not being exhausted is going to be the hard part. Like, y'all, if you're watching this, you almost certainly were following that uh, playoffs run from the Mavs with me. Like, I was mostly watching them the morning after because Irish time. But still, like, it was, you were seeing just how much it was taking out of everyone involved. Obviously, focusing on the Mavs, it was taking a lot of the Mavs, but every team was being drained in the West, and that's only going to increase this season, I feel. I really look at this West, and I go, this is going to be a brutal Western Conference playoffs. Now, the one thing that has as an upside is battle-hardened. They will be ready for anyone coming out of the East, whether it's Boston, Philly, whoever. And the key question is, will they have enough energy? So getting out of the West is not going to be easy. Like, some very good teams are going out in the first round. That's a guarantee. Like, very, very good basketball teams will lose in the first round of the Western Conference playoffs because there are just that many very good basketball teams in the Western Conference. So it's going to be tough. Like, you've got some serious outfits there. OKC, Mini, Denver just come off the top of the head. Like, you got to think Sacto are going to be improved. We don't know what the Warriors are going to be like, but they're not going to be pushovers. And that's just a few to name. Like, you know, there's more to think about as well. So there's so much to get through, so much to deal with, that the West is going to be tough. But yes, it is a winnable season for the Mavs. And it's more winnable because Luca has gotten some rest this offseason. It'll be more winnable again if they can manage his minutes in the regular season. Like, we should not be seeing crazy minutes for Luka Doncic this season. It's, uh, ideally, the Mavs will actually give him his lowest minutes per game since his rookie year, is what I would actually like to see for the Mavs. Uh, if not his lowest minutes per game all time. Like, which sounds bizarre for the guy, but that's the level I want to see. I want to see this. I want to see his minutes come way, way, way down. And uh, that way he'll have him fresher for bigger, heavier minutes in the playoffs. Because Luca's ready to do the hard minutes. We, he's got enough. He doesn't need the regular season to be reminded of what doing hard minutes are like. And also he's going to have a few games where he does them anyway. But we're, we need to see games where he is basically not the guy. 
and that's just the way it is, I think. And so, yeah, great potential, great opportunity, but we'll see what happens. And if you want to keep seeing what happens, please be sure to subscribe. Uh, we're trying to drive it up. Uh, thank you to Mavs fans, Slovenians, whoever's tuning into this. Even if you don't follow either, you just like to watch basketball videos. We love you all. And if we could just keep those subs going up, keep those views going up, tell your friends. We really appreciate it. But we'll be back Wednesday with our next video this week. It's Monday, Wednesday, Friday for all our videos. But until then, I'll see you soon.